It was an emotional moment for the family and friends and well wishers who gathered at the First Methodist Church in Orlando, Florida for the funeral service for the late singer of the Morgan Heritage Group, Peter Morgan. Hi again and welcome. This is Links 007 TV Entertainment Update and we'll have some highlights of the funeral service to come on this program. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back and thanks for joining us. This is Lynx 007 TV Entertainment Update. Hundreds of fans, friends and members from the music fraternity turn out in their numbers just in order to pay their final respect to the lead singer of the Morgan Heritage Group, Peter Morgan. Many took the time to reflect on the good memories that they shared plus also cherish the moment that they would have shared with this individual. The funeral service was held at the First Methodist Church in Orlando, Florida and started at 3 p.m. sharp.
special day. This is the day that we'll be celebrating the life of our brother Peter, Peter Anthony Morgan. This celebration and Thanksgiving service is all about the life that he lived here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren, sistren, we gather here today under the watchful eyes of Jah, in the spirit of love and unity, to bid farewell to a beloved soul who walked this earth with the light of Rastafari and his heart, in his heart. As we stand together in this sacred gathering, let us remember that in Rastafari, life is eternal and love is immortal. Our dear Peter has embarked on a journey to Zion where peace and love reign supreme and where we all aspire to reach through our own journey. Today, we celebrate not just the end of a physical journey, but the beginning of a spiritual odyssey into the everlasting arms of Jah Almighty. Peter's life was a testament to the principles of truth, righteousness, and the pursuit of harmony with nature and humanity. He lived with a heart full of love, a soul full of music, and a mind aligned with the teachings of his imperial majesty. As we reflect on the time spent with Peter, let us hold on to the joy he brought into our lives, the wisdom he shared, and the love he spread freely through his music. So let's carry forward his legacy by living our lives with positive purpose, embracing each day with gratitude and continuing the fight for justice and equality in his honor. Let's start this ceremony with a moment of silence, calling on the ancestors and the Most High to welcome Peter, Anthony, Morgan into the realm of eternal peace and rest. May his soul be cradled in the comfort of Jah Rastafari as we cherish his memory and continue his legacy with every breath we take. No soldiers rise and no soldiers fall. When they fall, their name is written on the wall. So we remember the cause that they fall for. But death, there's no reward. Cause when you're gone from a time, some will cry. But life goes on. And them have to dry them eye. And continue with the struggles in this life. So give thanks every morning when Jah open your eyes, cause to rise and fall is a cycle in life. So in this life, live for the cause and your name will live forever. So do Jah works and he remembered. Be who you are with love and live a great one. Please stand right now as we ask Dr. Peter Janet Shaw to come to the podium and open in prayer. Doctor. I want to share a word from Ecclesiastes chapter 12 before I enter into prayer. Thank you for standing for the reverence of God's word. It's a reminder to put, as Peter would say, Jah first. In everything we do, God must be first. The scripture said, remember thoughtfully also your creator in the days of your youth. For you are not your own, but his. Before evil days come or the years draw near when you will say of the physical pleasure, I have no enjoyment and delight in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened by impaired vision and the clouds of depression return after the rain of tears. In the days when the keepers of the house 
Hands, arm tremble, and the strong man, knees and feet bow themselves, and the grinder, molder teeth cease because they are few, and those eyes who look through the windows grow dim. When the door's lips are shut in the street and the sounds of the grinding of your teeth is low, and, on rise, and one rises at the sound of the birds and the crowing of the rooster, and all the daughters of music voice and ear sing softly. Furthermore, they are afraid of a high place and danger on the road, and almost three, three year here blossom white, and the grasshopper, a little thing, is burdened, and the cranberry desires appetite fail. For man goes to his eternal home, and the mourners go about the streets and the marketplace. Eternally, remember your creator before silver cords of life is broken and on the golden bowels is crushed or the pitcher of the fountain is shattered at the wheel at the certain is crushed. Then the dust out of which God made man's body will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to the God who gave it. When all has been heard, the end of the matter is Fear God, worship him with awe for reverence, knowing that he is almighty God and keep, commandment, keep his commandment for this applies to every person. In one of Peter's song, he says, I have a vision, I've got a vision for every man working in unity. Lord, well, one unity. There's a work to do, and Peter did his work. Now it's for us to do our work as we remember him, the light that shines so brightly in this world has gone home to be with the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our almighty God, the creator of all things, the knower of all things, you knew from the day Peter was consumed, conceived in his mother's womb, you anointed him and appointed him for a purpose. And we thank you, God, that he accomplished his purpose. Oh, God, we thank you for the 50 years that we had with him, oh, dear God, for the time his wife had with him, his children have with him. It is not enough. But we still say thank you, God. And today, oh dear God, as we remember him and we celebrate him, I pray, oh dear Heavenly Father, that you put your arms of comfort around his wife, around his children, around his mother, around his brothers and his sisters, and all those who mourn him today around the world. But God, we know, oh dear God, that he smiles down, oh dear Heavenly Father, and we will remember his words. Put Jah first. In everything that you do, when your name is called, you've got a work to do. And we thank you for your chosen vessel, Peter Anthony Morgan, and for the work that he has done. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. And let all those who believe that one day we will see him again and we will all sing in glory. Let all those who believe that Peter reigns high in the kingdom with the 24 elders. Let all those who believe that there will be a day when we will meet together again, say amen. Amen. And amen. This is a dynasty, this is a kingdom. Do you believe that? Look at the family that's here. We're awesome, we're so beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. At this time, the Morgan Heritage Family Choir will grace us right now. Where's the Morgan Heritage Choir? Come on in, ladies and gentlemen.
children or an inheritance from the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Good night. Love from the Morgan family. As we hear in prayer and meditation, we ask you to go before us. Go before us, John, John, go before us, and do thy worst as Go before us, cha cha, go before us, and do thy words thyself. I we say, oh, cha cha, roll, as the man say, oh, cha cha, roll, and do thy words thyself. My grandfather, Rasden Rai Morgan, who said, the more we are together, the happier we shall be. Now you have been good trouble. Yeah. I said, the more we are together. We shall be my God family because my love is your love, and your love is my love. I said, The more we are together, 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 we said, The more we are together. Happier we shall be. Why? Cause my love, my love is, is, your love. is your love. And your love, your love is my is love. my love. We said the more we are together. Yeah. 
happy we shall be because my love is your love and your love is my love we say the more we are together it is the happier we shall be why because my love my love is your Did you feel the love? Did you feel the vibration? Oh, oh God, yes. And the ancestors just come in and say, yes, that is it. Well, thank you so much, Morgan Heritage Family Choir. And at this time, we'll ask Mr. Den Roy Morgan Jr., my oldest brother, to come on up. Please. Greetings all. I come up here today with a heavy heart. Peter, my little brother. We started this journey almost 39 years ago. Every weekend, we would pick up, pack our instruments into the car. And I would take my brothers and my sisters' life in my hand with shot first, God before us, and we would take the highway from Springfield, Massachusetts to Brooklyn, New York. And we worked. We worked. Why, Peter, pulling out of my comfort zone today? I'm a drummer. I'm used to being in the background. But my brother brought me up here today to just speak about the journey that we took to do your work, to do your work. Peter, tell the world all in all you do. You put your first. And we will continue to live that exemplary life, exemplary life. That we put Jah first in everything we do. And I want to do something too. Peter is going off to whence he came to sit with the ancestors, to sit with the greats. I just like everybody to put in their hands together. To beat them. Long live Peter Morgan. And I just want to touch bases on some of the people that help us to start this journey. Our musical director, Clifford Branch. He called me and he reminded me of when our father sent Peter to his house to knock on his door and ask him to come and help us with our music arrangement. And Clifford Branch did a great work with us. But now he can see his student sitting up on high with the greats of his accomplishments and his work that he did. He studied hard. He studied humanity. He studied life. And he had a lot of love to share. And his work is finished. He has passed the baton. So we, the rest of us, his children, his wife, his wife, his children, mothers, we, his brothers and sisters, his mother, see our dear? Mama, when I was with Peter in Jamaica, my son, Den Ryan Mark on the third, finally got a chance to do a song with him. And the song said, 
mama don't cry. Because this child is surely going to make it. And he made it. He's made it. The world has seen our brother. So for this, I give God thanks for everything. Because he's not in pain anymore. People don't know my brother's struggle. He struggled. But all in his struggle, he kept going. So we must keep going. We must keep going. Peter Maga. Thank you. One of many children. Blessings to your mother, Ina. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Mama, for being here. At this time, word of encouragement will be brought to us by Dr. Gershom Nelson. As I looked around and saw this gathering, it occurred to me that, believe it or not, we are all related. And as such, we need to understand our purpose for being here. And if there is nothing that one gets from this gathering this evening is that Peter Morgan lived an exemplary life and has left a legacy that we all can emulate and pass on to the next generation. It is bittersweet. We meet here to grieve the loss of Peter with his mom, Hyacinth, his wife, Maria, children, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, other relatives, and a host of friends. While we grieve, which is a natural process and we shouldn't fight the grief, we have occasion to celebrate because we can celebrate the life of someone who lived purposefully. I treasure the opportunity to share with you this afternoon a background to understanding Peter and the Morgan family. It is only a week ago that there was the first forum held by one of the largest organizations with roots in Jamaica. It is called the Union of Jamaican Alumni Associations. And if you went to school in Jamaica, chances are that your high school is represented in that group. For the first time, there was a conference on reggae. Everyone came to the conclusion that reggae is a gift to the world from Jamaica. That deserves an applause, don't you think? <laughs> However, it is not only a gift, it is a message and a challenge. There are a number of ambassadors who embraced reggae and Rastafarianism and made it global. So wherever you go on this planet today, 
you will encounter reggae and you will encounter Rastafarians. Peter and the Morgan family have been authentic and systematic in their ambassadorship for reggae and Rastafarianism. So this memorial service is very, very, very special because we celebrate the life and works of a second generation ambassador for reggae. All the folks in the hearing of my voice are familiar with the pioneers in reggae, which actually include Denroy Morgan, Peter's father. And he passed on that legacy to the children and I am pleased and delighted to be celebrating with you this evening the life of his son who has become an icon for the reggae message and challenge. But to appreciate reggae and Rastafarianism, we need to know something. We need to know of the enslavement of Africans in the Americas. We need to also know that after emancipation, the descendants of slaves were oppressed continuously and for an extended period of time. And you ask me today, has that oppression ended? And if you were to ask Peter, and if you ask the Morgan family, through their songs, you will discover that there's work yet to be done. So, it is not surprising, it's with that background that Marcus Garvey said, look to Africa for the crowning of a prince. And intriguingly enough, in 1930, a prince was indeed crowned. At the time Marcus Garvey made that declaration, there was only one country south of the Sahara that escaped the scramble for Africa that Europeans engaged in separating and oppressing the African continent. That one country was Ethiopia. And in 1930, there was indeed a coronation. The coronation was of Ras Tafari. Ras is a title, by the way. But the revelation did not end there. Five years later, Ethiopia, that had not previously been colonized, was invaded by fascism. After World War II, there emerged what was called the League of Nations. Ethiopia was a member of the League. The League had as its principal objective to pre prevent another world, world war, like World War I. And so the, the rule was, any member state that was attacked would be supported by all members to repel that attack. So, Ras Tafari, who had been anointed emperor of Ethiopia, assuming the name Hail Selassie I, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah made his appeal to the League of Nations. The League ignored his appeal and in his Geneva address to the League and the world, Hail Selassie II declared, there is a rule of the universe which says what you do to others will be done to you. And to the extent that my colleagues refuse to assist in repelling fascism, 
is the extent to which fascism will find its way to your doors sooner or later. Five years, and fascism was overrunning Europe, plunged the world into World War II. The catastrophe is well known. The carnage is known. So then I, I need to give you one other connection. Leonard Howell, a follower of Marcus Garvey, knowing what Garvey said, observed all these developments and concluded that Garvey was indeed prophetic and that indeed Ras Tafari represented not only persistence and deliverance from oppression, but indeed was a model for Africans in the diaspora to look to for strength, to look for, to, for redemption. At the same time as these oppressive elements enveloped the world, there began a musical transformation in Jamaica so that by the 60s there emerged what we now call reggae. And reggae epitomized so well the oppression and the hope for deliverance that it fit perfectly with Rastafarianism. So, Peter Morgan represents the unfolding of that history, the unfolding of that hope, that aspiration, that true one love, that equality, that pursuit of justice. He has represented his generation well, with excellence. He has, in fact, along with the Morgan heritage, elevated the genre to the point where the world looked around and said, you folks deserve Grammys. I think we all should be proud of that. So as we mourn, we even celebrate more because this messenger, this ambassador of reggae and Rastafarianism has charted a course which tells us clearly that he rolled up his sleeve, he embraced his mission, and having equipped himself by the tutelage of Mama Hyacinth and the tutelage of Father Denroy Morgan brought to the world a level of consciousness, a level of awareness that calls all of us to go down to the riverside. Yes. And so this evening, Peter calls on all of us to go down to the riverside. We go down to the riverside to repent. We go down to the riverside to rejuvenate. We go down to the riverside to become refreshed. But having been refreshed, having been rejuvenated, we are called upon to rise up and proclaim the message of love, truth, justice, and grace so ably represented by Peter Morgan. Representing truth, representing justice, representing love is not abstract. It means we must engage in activities that are reflective of our love reflective of justice and reflective of truth. I must underscore the fact that Peter heralded this incredible message 
to the world. And I must say, long live Peter Morgan and the Morgan Heritage. Say that with me. Long live Peter Morgan and the Herit and Morgan Heritage. We are here, and I hope we will appreciate the amazing accomplishment of our brother whose life and works will live forever in our hearts and hopefully in our actions. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from Dr. Gershom Nelson. He's a retired Dean of the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences from the University of Central Missouri. Come on, another Rono. Come on now. Um, thank you, sir. Blessings to the Morgan family. At this time, we are very honored to have in our presence the consulate from New York, the Consular General Ali Alcyon Alcyon Wilson. Please. <laughs> Let's pronounce it properly. You are the Consul? The Consul General from Jamaica to New York. And your name? Alcyon. Alcyon Wilson. Wonderful. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Family members of my dear friend, the late Peter Morgan, my colleague, Consul General, Consul General Oliver, he's the Consul General from Jamaica to Florida, musicians, other dignitaries, specially invited guests, Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I know we are mourning Peter, but ladies and gentlemen, good evening. evening. We're here to celebrate him. Today, we gathered here to honor and remember the life of a remarkable individual who also happened to be a friend of mine, Peter Morgan. I would like to begin by expressing my dearest condolences to the family and friends of Peter. Losing a loved one is never, ever easy. And my heart goes out to all of you during this difficult, very difficult time. When I received the call from Mojo, letting me know that Peter had passed, it really broke my heart. As I have known this family for quite a very long time, Gramps and I have always shared a special bond. And I know how much Peter meant to Gramps and Mojo. Peter was not just a son. He was not just a brother. He was not just a husband. He was not just a father. Nor he was not just a friend. Peter Morgan was a talented reggae music. A talented reggae musician. <laughs> who made significant contributions to our culture. His music touched the hearts and souls of the people all over the world. especially in Africa, spreading messages of love, unity, social 
consciousness and peace. Through his artistry, Peter became a symbol of Jamaican pride and a voice to those who needed to be heard. I remember the countless times that Yvette, Peter's sister, and I would travel to Jamaica all along the vibrant countryside to hand out sneakers to the students in Jamaica who could not afford to purchase one. Yvette would talk to me about, his, about her brothers, about one of my favorite group, Morgan Heritage, and we would sing as we drove through Portland. And sometimes I would get out and dance when I hear the songs that is sung by Peter, Mojo, and Gramps. Today, as we bid farewell to Peter, let us remember that not only for his musical prowess, but also for the kindness, warmth, and sweet songs that he has brought into our lives. His legacy will continue to inspire generations to come, reminding us of the of reggae music. To Yuna, Gramps, Luke, Mojo, Yvette, his wife, his, his children, other relatives and friends of Peter, please know that you are not alone in your grief. The entire Jamaican community stands with you, offering you our sincere hope of love. We share in your loss, and we hope that the memories of Peter's extraordinary life will bring you comfort in the days ahead. Please remember that the Jamaican diaspora will always be here. Your musical brothers and sisters will always be here to support you and to lift you up. May his soul rest in eternal peace, and may his music continue to resonate in the hearts of people across the world forever. One love. Recently, I heard that Jamaicans all believe that we are number one. You agree? Yes. All right. Everywhere we go, we take over, right? Definitely. And everywhere we go, we have to have a mayor, right? Come on now. Come on now. We rule things around here, right? So, right this moment, we are about to take over Orlando. And in order for us to take over Orlando, we need permission. And this person that is coming to the podium is the Commissioner Regina Hill, who is now the Mayor Pro Tem, and she is going to give us a declaration that we run things. How about that? Come on, put your hands together and welcome Regina Hill. Greetings. Greetings. It's a celebration. You know, uh, I'll take a point of privilege uh, prior to presenting this resolution from my mayor, Buddy Dyer, and myself, Commissioner Regina Hill. I had the honor and privilege um, to actually spend some time with PETA and Mojo. You know, uh, community-minded folk, the Morgan family are. And it was a couple years ago, Mojo and Peter came right across the street to City Hall to talk about the work they were doing and wanted to do in the community. 
and also have this huge music festival over at Tinkerfield. So I'm honored and I was quite taken back and heartbroken, as the counselor stated, when uh, I got the call from Mrs. Fatima about the passing of Peter. But I celebrated because I knew he loved God. And as, as Brother Morgan that came before me stated the journey, I am not new to the Jake Jamaican diaspora. I consider myself a ragamuffin long time. I truly believe the leadership that I bring I would not have if it wasn't in the early 80s and the 90s where I sat in ciphers with good Rasta brothers and sisters that started to groom me and mold me and taught me knowledge of self and understanding and wisdom and love and unity. Every, at least five times a week, you'll find me in a Jamaican local restaurant where they know me by name. And I can put some pots together too. So much so to where I even raise two sons that are Jamaicans. So I am a true pod. Yeah, they poured him to me real good. <laughs> so to say that, that I am very connected to the Jamaican chamber here in this area and the Jamaican diaspora and the Caribbean diaspora as a whole. So I stand here not just as a city representative today, I like to say that I stand here as family. So with that being said, we thought it not robbery to honor a dignitary like Peter and the Morgan family for all that they have done. And when the mayor's office was called, he said, yes, go. And so today I like to present and not everybody get this. I just want you to know this is not average. This is not normal. <laughs> My buddy died, just don't put his stamp on any and everybody and everything. So this is truly an honor and a privilege that has been uh, sealed by myself and the mayor. So whereas, Mr. Peter, Peter Anthony Morgan was a cherished husband, father, grandfather, son, and brother. And whereas Peter was celebrated as a lead vocalist of Morgan Heritage, the Grammy Award winning reggae group, his smooth vocals and unforgettable voice left an indelible mark on fans throughout the world. And Raz, Peter created the band in 1994 with his siblings, Una, Roy, Gramps, and I don't want to mess it up, so I'm just going to say Luke's Morgan, and of course, my good friend, Mr. Mojo Morgan. And Raz, he had a profound impact on the global music scene and his contributions to reggae, and Afro-Caribbean music and culture is undeniable. And Raz, Peter was committed to using music as a tool for uplifting others, following in the footsteps of his beloved father, Ross Denroy Morgan Sr. And Raz, along with his brother Mojo, Peter was a proud resident, did I say proud resident, of the city of Orlando community, who was dedicated to nurturing his family here in Orlando, creating a loving and supportive environment while growing roots and creating memories. Raz, the city of Orlando, recognizes Peter's incredible impact here not just in this community, but around the world. 
Oh, and love the legacy that he has left behind his family, his children, his grandchildren. See, I would say love is until the grave. It never dies because when it lives on to the next generation and a generation and a generation thereafter. So I celebrate the life, the legacy of this great man through what we're looking at throughout this place. Oh, there's no need to be sad. There's no need to cry because he yet lived. He let live through all of us. Dry your tears. Stand up and applaud the life, the love, the life. Peter Morgan, a true champion of justice, of peace, of reggae, of unity. So now, therefore, we, Buddy Dare, Mayor of Orlando, I, Regina Hill, extend our life, our legacy, our love to the Morgan family to Peter Anthony Morgan. So we declare Thursday, March 7, 2024, as a citywide day of mourning. But no, not mourning, I say celebration. As we recognize the impact, the legacy of our dear friend, Peter. Anthony Morgan, here in the city of Orlando. One love, Rasta Celestia. All right, we rule things round. Yes, long live Peter. Come on now, come on now, come on. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Down south decide to take a trip up to Orlando, to Central Florida. Put your hands together and welcome the Council General to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Council General Oliver Mayer, welcome to Orlando, sir. What good? <laughs> Come on. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If you are here and you have been touched by the life of Peter Morgan, would you just raise your hand at this time? Let's give him a big round of applause. As a Consul General of Jamaica, based in Miami with responsibility for the Southern United States, it's indeed an honor to be asked to say a few words and I want to first of all just express my deepest condolences to the family. I must, if I may say, the royal family, yeah. the music. Do you agree? Yeah. And on behalf of every citizen of Jamaica and the government of Jamaica, we say thank you to this gentleman who has made Jamaica proud and the world proud. You know, over the past three months, I've been now to three funerals to say goodbye to three legends. In January, we said goodbye to Pluto. Um, just last week, it was Aston, family man Barrett. And now we say goodbye to another legend. 
Peter has done a lot for the music. His energy, his love, his connectivity. He had a message for the world. And there's a certain message you feel when Morgan Heritage is on the stage. There is a vibe. And there is a feeling that we can do better as a people. We can come together as a people. We can make this world a better place. That's the energy and message from Morgan's heritage. And certainly Peter as lead singer, in my opinion, has been one of the greatest voices I've ever heard in the world. Me now go hide and talk. I want boss as an artist. <laughs> and everywhere I go, I try a thing. And we get a little clap here and there. And we continue to try. And recently, I got word. I got word that Morgan Heritage was going to close festival, jerk festival on November 13th and so I make sure put on my bashment clothes go down early I'm a big friend with Gramps so I link up Gramps early I went backstage he do a nice little video with me but I was hoping they would have called me on stage so I go around the front, and I say, Peter, I say, Peter. <laughs> but listen, they mash up the place, and did an excellent job. And even though they never called me up, <laughs> I will make sure I continue to sing the music of Morgan Heritage wherever I go. <laughs> but I want to... Remind us here today. We don't know the time of day when the Almighty will call us home. I want us to love upon each other. Treat each other with respect. If you have a problem with your brother or your sister, forgive them. Hug them up. Life is short. And it seemed that, boy, the good ones are being taken home early. I was with Peter around the back, and I'm happy we spoke. We spoke for about 10 minutes, along with Gramps. And Peter shared some stuff with me, and I could feel his energy. Energy of a great man. What contributed so much to the world. And like all great men, his music will continue to liberate the and hearts of people, not just in Jamaica, but around the world. And that's the power. And I want to salute parents who gave birth to this lovely family, the Morgan family. I want to pay tribute to them because they have given us a great legacy. And Peter, you have blessed us with so many big hits. I'll tell you some of mine quickly. Tell me how come. You love that one? I'm going to tell you one of my favorite now. You don't have to dread to be. All right. Ricky, bring back the. What we need is. And down by the river. Those are five of my favorites, and I'm sure you guys have more. But I want to say, boy, tell me how come we had to lose such a great man like Peter so soon. But certainly one day we will see him again down by the river. John knows best. And so in closing, I said, Peter, 
Can't believe you're gone, Aya. Your legendary impact will live on forever. For your music and message is like a burning fire that will continue to take and lift us higher. We will see you again by the river. One love, Peter. One love, my brother. Recently, my grandmother passed away, and when um, she was in and out of consciousness, I said, Mama, can you hear Gabriel's trumpet sounding? And she looked at me and said, if you can hear it, then it's for you. Come in. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It is well with my soul. That's a testimony that we should all be able to say and sing, it is well, it is well. And we know it's well with Peter's soul. He taught us how to love, didn't he? He taught us about unity. He taught us about connecting to the source, the source which was Jehovah Jah. We're honored to have Catherine Goodall here. And come up and pay tribute to Peter. Forgive me if some of this sounds like gibberish. <laughs> oh, they say that death leaves a heartache that no one can heal, but love leaves a memory that no one can steal. There are so many sides to Peter. <laughs> First one I met was Peter, the gentle one. Then I encountered the Brooklyn gangster only by mouth do. <laughs> and then Peter the Yadi and Japit the messenger. God, message, and f up. that's who he was. My brother, my friend. I didn't even know where to begin. Funny thing is, when Tommy asked me, she said, you're one of the few people that knows the, all the different sides of Peter. And I, I started by thinking of Peter in a professional setting. And it was actually hard, which is how I met him first, because it never ever felt like work. I will never forget the night that I met Peter. We were in the Bahamas, and for some reason, the Bahamas clearly is... Um, a very special place to us. We were in the Bahamas because Ali Cole was having his reggae festival and there was a party on a private island and there was this man sitting down by himself away from everybody else. And something, and I guess today I can acknowledge it was God that brought us together, made me walk over to him and ask him, are you okay? And in true piece of fashion, bright smile, right? Um, and he said, yes, he's good, but you know, he never wanted to the crowd. It wasn't his thing. Likewise, same. And so we're talking and he was telling me that he was there for the show. And I was like, oh, me too. And he told me he was a part of Morgan Heritage. Now, please bear with me. I was maybe 19 years old at the time. And I, and I said, oh, is you them called Gramps? I mean, seriously, he has a great patch. Wouldn't he be natural that that's who he called grandpa, right? And he laughed and he said, no, I'm a brother that. And I cannot remember what happened after that. After that, I became a fully adopted member of the family. I don't even know when there was a transition to not being a part of the family. Peter the Rock, a very fitting name because he was the glue that kept it all together, right? So 
there's a lot of words I couldn't find, and so I chose to use his. He said, what we need is love to help us grow to today. He reminds us to let us all be aware of how we entertain angels unaware. Peter treated everybody the same way. Like he said, no matter if you wear a jacket or a tie or you walk barefoot, which, by the way, he used to do a lot. <laughs> um, just love is what he exuded. Even though he was an introvert, when he opened up, all he felt was love. I don't think there's anybody in this room that can say that they encountered anything other than love from Peter. It was only love that exuded from him or strength from a place of love. He somehow managed to see the good in everyone and most situations, forgiving. But he was no fool. He avoided drama at all costs. He was a definition to me of 70 times 7. He never missed an opportunity to honor his parents. To me, he was a perfect mix of his father's jovial personality and Emo's firm but even-tempered spirit. The militant side of Peter came out in his music, in my opinion, because he didn't play when he was sharing his message. He was a professional, on time for his show, never compromising his sound, focused. It's funny because most of my favorite songs are not even the Morgan Heritage songs that everybody knows. I think that um, when Oliver talked about Peter being one of the greatest vocalists, I don't think that so many of us have even heard his range. Peter used to say that um, he was very mindful of the songs that he released because he didn't want to confuse people because he was a singer of Morgan Heritage, right? <laughs> But he was a professional. He was where he needed to be, and he committed to it. He fulfilled anything that he committed to. Quiet, but when he went on stage, he came alive. As a lyricist, <laughs> I think there are so many people that have benefited from the lyrical genius of Peter Morgan. Again, his range. <laughs> and when we talk about militants, when it came to his family, <laughs> Another side came out of Peter. He was extremely protective and private. Grandpa, mommy, Loogie, Mojo. <laughs> as much as he used to fuss and cuss. That's how you know Peter loves me and I'm cuss you. <laughs> Who running late? Who supposed to do this? Who have the itinerary? He was a glue. I promise. Mojo, where are you? I promise that I'm going to help Mojo with the farm because I don't want Peter to come for me. And I'm going to continue to love your family as my own. Getting used to seeing Peter with his other siblings outside of Morgan Heritage, outside of LMS. For me, the only word I could find was free. Seeing him with him, even Miriam. Even. It was like he came alive. His ability to just celebrate life. I had the privilege of being accepted into his family and was also the beneficiary of his fussing and cussing, second only to Jenny. <laughs> he was a very demanding individual. Peter never asked questions. He just told you what he needed to get done. <laughs> Since COVID, and especially in the past two years, I've had the privilege of seeing you be intentional about spending more time with your family, your children, so many more of your siblings, and I can say that in the last two years, I probably even got to see Peter more in family time than I have in the last 20 something years outside of work. <laughs> I'm happy that he got to meet Lenny and he embraced him and showed him so much love. 
as a father. When I met Peter, at that time it was five, and all he could talk about was all of you. I have seen so many videos, uh, he has shared so many updates, the level of pride that your father has had for all of you is inexplicable. He loved you so much more than he could express. I've been blessed to be the godmother for our baby princess, Gigi. And being able to see Peter evolve as a parent, being able to see him spend time communicating his evolved love is what I call it, with all of you, really, has made my heart overflow. It's fascinating to see so much of him in all of you. Our sunshine girl. I remember when he called me again, we we're going to the Bahamas and he said, I'm bringing somebody to meet you. The moment I met you, I knew you were going to be our wife. <laughs> and my sister. The only words I could find to say to you are his words. Make me want to give you the world. I've done wrongs before, but I do those things no more. Loving you has made me a better man for sure. You make me complete. You're my better half. You brought out a side of me I never knew I had. I'm giving you the best of my love. I can see it in your that you're hurting deep inside. You have a little faith that everything's gonna be all right. And that's what, it, that's what love does to you. When it's really true, just break that frown and let your beauty shine through. Japits. You are my forever. You are forever my friend. Though in this life I'll never see you again, you now have your wings and I feel you in my heart straight through. Because you live, because your life never ends. You now fly with angels in the wind. There is love when there is love. love is, and there are memories that we hold real deep in our hearts. Thank you, my sister. Christy Barber, could you please come and pay tribute to Mr. Peter Morgan? Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Barber, and I'm the sixth member of Morgan Heritage. <laughs> Thought you knew, right? Um, I have been a part of my beautiful music family of Morgan Heritage for over a quarter of a century. Um, we've worked together on so many different things, and I'll never forget the day when I was exposed to their music in the 90s, the record label that I worked at, um, there was an A&R there that's a dear friend of ours, uh, Joel Chin, who I shared an office with, and he was working on some records from them, and I was like, whoa, who is this singer? Like, he's amazing. It blew me away. And I was like, I told Joel, I want to be a part of this project. And what was great about working with him was, is whenever there was something going on that I was super passionate about, he let me hit the ground running, and that's exactly what we did. And it's uh, 28 years later, I've worked with Yuna, Luke's, Mojo, Gramps, and Peter, who anybody knows me knows is one of my favorite singers of all time. And um, amazing things, and we've traveled all over the world together. I mean, in the 90s when it was so hard to promote a lot of the music, the opportunities 
that we had work in the Don't F a Dread record. We went from Springfield, Massachusetts to St. Thomas, Jamaica with CBS Sunday morning because the producers couldn't believe how many kids Pops had. And they just wanted to make sure that they had it on CBS to let the world know. On a Father's Day special, it was amazing. And we played parties for Johnny Cash, TBS, the Special Olympics with Bon Jovi and Stevie Wonder, you name it, the royal family of reggae has done it. And it was always a goal of mine and a big goal of theirs. And it makes me so proud to be able to say Grammy winning Morgan Heritage because it took a long time to get there. I remember the night it happened, I was in London and I stayed up all night and I was in the hotel room and I'm pretty, think, pretty sure the people next door thought I was getting murdered because I screamed so loud. They called me the minute they won backstage in the media room. I ended screaming on the phone. I was like, we did it, girl. We did it. It was so exciting. One of the best moments ever. And then they came to Nashville. We got to celebrate in Nashville and that was so amazing that I got to see them right off of that win. And then the next nomination, we all went to the Grammys together in New York. So it's just been amazing things. I've been so proud to be a part of this family. Um, each one of them, it, it, they were like my first brothers and sisters in this music industry. And each one of them has their own personality. But the great thing about Peter was Peter's one of those artists that no matter what I asked him to do, no matter war, where I told him to go, Peter never, ever, ever gave, he, he put 100% of himself into everything. He never said no. He always did it with a smile. He always did it with dignity. He was professional. He was amazing. And that magnetic smile and his laughter, we miss. And I remember when we would disagree, the family members would get together and they make Peter call me. Because everybody, I was like, oh, look at them. They're going to stick the big dog on me because nobody says no to Peter. It's like every time he calls on the phone, I just know I have to be like, I'll do anything for you. You know? So, and they knew it. That's why they'd make Peter call. Um, I, I feel lost. I can't believe that I'm standing here talking about this right now because there was no lovelier friend than Peter Morgan. And I could just tell stories and stories for days. I'll leave you with one last one. I remember, I think we were in St. Kitts, and Peter said um, he was going to go by PETA. And I was like, PETA? Like, a PETA chip? He's like, no, not a PETA chip. And I'm like, well, how do you spell? And he's like, P-E-E-T-A-H. I'm like, oh, like a cheetah. And he was like, no, not like a cheetah. I said, no, like a cheetah. He's like, no, not like a cheetah. Because he knew where my head was going, and from that day forth, his nickname was PETA Cheetah. So every time I see him, it's like, Hey, Peter Cheetah, I miss you. I loved both of you. You were beautiful. Your family's beautiful. Luke's, Gramps, Mojo. Wherever, whenever, however, I will always be there for my Morgan family. So, Peter, keep the block warm for me up there. I know you're going to continue to make music. I know Pops is ready. I know Bobby Digital is up there. He's ready to produce it. Joel will be right by your side. And I know Joe Mercer would love to have a feature. Good evening, guys. Right. I remember when I was coming to the United States in the 70s and we had Air Jamaica. They would leave the gate late. And just about when they're going over Cuba, the pilot change gear and put in turbo and make it to New York on time. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're putting in turbo right about now. Okay? <laughs> so, bear with us here. And so, I'm asking the speakers who are coming up now to put on turbo, okay? Meaning, we, we have to get out of here at a certain time. Mr. Shane Brown, where are you, Shane? Come on, baby boy. Oh, hello, ma respect to you, sir. Come on up. Turbo. Good evening, everybody. 
family, friends, and loved ones. It's an honor and a privilege for me to stand before you today and pay tribute to Peter Anthony Morgan. He's a very special person to me and a lot of people here today, and a very ir irreplaceable person. I met Peter and Morgan's family some 20, 20 odd years ago in Canada at a concert. Um, the concert featured a number of acts, and Gramps, Lukes, Mojo, and Yuna called me in the dressing room and said, Yo, when are you going to mix a show for me? You remember Gramps? I'm going to say, Tonight, you know. So tell the engineer that he might have the night off. <laughs> That night, it was like the first time I really heard Peter sang. His voice, his presence on the stage <laughs> moved and lifted my spirit so much that after the show, he said to the Morgan, from this day on, I want to be an engineer, no matter who, who else I was working for. Gramps? Yeah, man. Hmm. From there, Pete and I developed this friendship that quickly evolved to family. And Pete and I would always have conversations after each show because we have a game during the show where Peter would be singing because I know what I do to his voice. And I would do, do the same thing to his voice, even though every night Peter changed up something for me. But I was always like, aware of what Peter was going to do. So much so that other members of the group would say to me, Yo, I want to know each other, so. You know? <laughs> now, Peter for me, Wow. I would never mix a song, no matter if it's Morgan Heritage's song or whoever, without sharing it with Peter. Because Peter was one of my biggest fans, you know. But yet still, he was my biggest critic. So I always have to mix a song and say, Peter, listen to this. And I must say, yo, well, I don't know, man. I think you can do a little better, you know. <laughs> I mean, I said, well, wicked Peter said, no, nah, man, go again. So Peter is responsible for the engineer that I am today. Believe me, Peter had a pair of the best ears that I know. What a man. <clears throat> yeah. Today is our chance to say thank you, Peter. Thank you for the way you brightened our lives. We will all feel cheated you know, that you're taken away from us so young and so quickly. But yet we must learn to be grateful that you came into our lives and that was such a blessing. Peter, as a producer now, Peter and I would always share ideas. We'd always be writing songs. And any project I'm involved in, Peter was like my ghostwriter. I remember three weeks ago, as, um, while working on an album for Master Griffiths, I said, Peter, Master, next thing on. Peter said, what? Ready. And... to show you the man Peter was and how he was for the producer I was. Um, inspiring people not to give up because I'm of a bad day. You know, making people know that there's, there's a lot of love in the world to go around. So. Um, there's so much 
love in the world will go round. So don't give up just because today you feel down. There's so much in the world will go round. So don't give up just because today you feel down. And we... We must be reminded that, yes, we have lost Peter, presence as a human being, but his spirit lives on forever. Hmm. So this room may be filled with tears, but let us not forget the smiles, the laughter, and the precious memories that Peter has brought into our lives. Today, I remember Peter and I honor his spirit by saying, Almighty God, thank you. Thank you for blessing us and the world at large for experiencing Peter's unwavering love, his musical gifts you empowered him with, and his invaluable lessons. My family, friends, and co-workers, I beg of you, let us honor this great man by moving forward, being kinder to each other, dreaming a bit bigger, and celebrating life a bit more. Peter's wisdom and his kindness will continue to echo through the hearts, through our hearts, and be a guide on this journey of life. As we gather here today, we find our ocean of emotions. It's not easy to say goodbye, especially to a man like Peter. But today I'm not saying goodbye. Instead I'm saying thank you. Thank you, Peter Anthony Morgan. Your physical presence may be absent, but your spirit lives on. Your love continues to surround us. Your teachings will continue to guide us. Your memories continue to inspire and comfort us. And your legacy continues to shine always. Peter Anthony Morgan, I love and salute you. Good evening. All right, that's what I'm talking about, that love. At this time, two for one is going on. <laughs> Sharon Burke and Judith Budley, two for one today. It's awesome. Come on up and pay tribute to Mr. Peter. Well done. Good evening, everyone family and friends. In 1994, I was introduced to Morgan Heritage by the renowned patriarch of the family, Denra Morgan. He made me know His Majesty Almighty had chosen me to have Morgan Heritage as my new family, and I was to guide them and protect them and also expose them to Jamaica. Well, that is how my journey started with Morgan Heritage, and I fell instantly in love with Gramps Una, Peter. I've always remembered Pe Peter staring at me with those big eyes when we met. I went home that evening, and I put on my red, green, and gold tam and said, I'm now a raster. <laughs> I would always remember when I would have a party, I just needed to invite Morgan Heritage alone because the room would be filled. I didn't need to. I'd instantly gained a sister and many brothers that would last for a lifetime. My task was to make them known all over Jamaica, and I was happy this was my group. 
At that time, I was working on Reggae Sunsplash, and I told them Morgan Heritage had to be on the show. They played the Sunsplash beach party that year. I had heard that the MCA label was signing some acts that had worked on Sunsplash after having flown in to see the performances. Only the best of the best worked on Sunsplash. I quickly worked them on the Sunsplash big stage, and the next big thing was that they were signed to MCA Records, and then the rest was history. What always struck me about Peter is his calmness and his coolness. Peter always had those beautiful eyes that would captivate anyone. I am sure I am saying what everybody else says. We have lost a gem. His voice was world class, and as a lead singer, he is comparable with the best in not only reggae, but in any genre. Peter has left a big void in our industry, which will be hard to fill. Peter, you are gone, but never will be forgotten, and I miss you. Thank you, everybody. Blessings, bless up, big up. Right at this time, thank you so much. We thank you so much. Mr. Garfield Chin, born. Come on up, my brother. Blessings. So I kind of spent the last, the last half an hour talking to myself as I was listening to everybody else speak. And I was saying to myself, Don't go up there, go back. When you speak about Morgan Heritage and you speak about Peter Morgan, we forget about that great place called Brooklyn. And before I say what I want to say, I want to speak in the language that someone would be speaking in Brooklyn. What do you mean Peter Morgan is gone? What do you mean we're not going to see him again? If I, turn on, um, if I turn on my radio, I'm going to hear Peter. If I go on social media, I'm going to see Peter. Peter is not gone. Greatness is something that is not forgotten. Greatness is something that has to be celebrated. And because I know this, in talking to you today, I don't want to use past tense. So I'm not going to use was. I want to use the word is. Peter Morgan is great. Peter Morgan is a great person. Peter Morgan is greatness. Peter Morgan is a great artist and also a great friend. I know this because I grew up with most of the Morgan Heritage family. We grew up as youth. Rasta youth, does I try to find what we are. Lucky for us, we had guidance from some elders that helped us along the way. But along the way was also that mission and that mission of music and all of us wanting to be a place in music that we can be celebrated. Years later, we all did it. I celebrate Morgan's every chance that I get because I know the journey. I know the sacrifice. I know the hours we spent just sitting there dreaming about people knowing who we were in the space of music. I celebrate them because we're friends. The only thing that I can, the only word that comes to my mind when I talk about Morgan Heritage and Peter Morgan is proud. I'm proud of what they've accomplished. And I'm also proud of the fact that you guys got to understand the magnitude that not only Peter, but his brothers and sisters means to the music, their art form, their love, not only for the music, but for humanity. 
Peter was a good dude. And when I say good dude, I mean, I don't think there's anybody in our musical fraternity that can say something bad about Peter. He was just that dude. <laughs> Professionally, people who know Peter would probably call him a humble lion. Humble in his being. He spoke, spoke soft, very calm and very caring. But he was also a lion. A lion that roared. And he roared his message. A message that was clear. Righteousness. Black power, black upliftment. Mental upliftment. Equality. Marcus Garvey. Selassie. Rasta. Our teachings of Rastafari prepared us for this moment. We know about the shedding of flesh. We understand it. And we also understand that the most important part of life is your works. Your deeds. The positive impact that you make on humanity. Rastas know life without works is meaningless. So before I go, ask yourself this. Who have you helped? Who are you inspiring on your journey in life? And if the answer to yourself is no one, then please follow the examples of Peter Morgan. He did his work, his work was well done, and therefore his life is meaningful. We know for us all, one bright morning, when our work is over, we shall fly away home. For these few words, I give thanks. Thank you, my brother. Powerful words. If I could sing, I would sing that song, I'll fly away, and Peter would say, please be quiet. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica has extended all the way to the islands of the South Pacific to an island called Tonga. At this time, I'm very honored to call Miss Anelia, Anela, Anelia, Analia Brown. Come on up, my friend. All right. To Morgan Heritage, your legacy has reached every corner of this earth. We bring with us the love of the South Pacific Polynesian Islands to honor today, Pizza Morgan. Can put out your fire. 
This is not a dreadlocks thing, divine conception of the heart. You don't have to dread to be Rasta. Analia Brown from Tonga, from the island in the South Pacific. Blessings, big up, big up. Come on now. We are all aware of the date we were born and the date that has been appointed for us to die. And in between those two dates, there's a dash. And it's up to us to accomplish many things. At this time, we're honored to have Dr. Yvette Morgan to come and pay tribute by the reading of the eulogy to represent that dash. Dr. Yvette Morgan. He's still testing me. That's my big bro. One year separated us. That's it, just a year. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. There's been a permeating message today about who Peter was. And love seemed to ring out throughout everyone's who he was. But like it was mentioned by my sister Kathy, Peter had multiple personalities. There was Peter, there was Peter, there was Japites, there was the Black Viking, and for me, there was pets and I was his bete. Those were the names we gave each other. Where I come from far. I remember the one vivid experience that I had when we all graduated Grumps, Sandra, Japites, when we graduated from Springfield Central High School and came to New York. And I used to sit and braid that thick hair before him to draw the locks, he had his natural hair. And I took such honor in being the sister who would sit and part and braid. And with every braid, I touched that stage back in sun, Sunsplash as a backup dancer, as a chipet, Mary, Taliba. I don't know what I'm top about. And I came to a fork or whether I was going to pursue my education. And one of the things he always told me was, sis, if I tell you before, 
No fly can pitch pan you and me not kill it. As so much him did love me. And always reminded me to live the life I love. And love the life I live. And don't ever forget to be that beacon of light. Never waver. And stop worrying what people are saying about you. No worry about that. Because people are going to always talk. Because enough BMW out there. But you know what BMW was with Jeff Eats? Bad mind and wicked. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And me no want Sandman come pull me off at the stage. So me have to share this experience. When, my fa when our father was ready to go through his transition, it was me and Jeff Pete in a Lazarus room. Whether him sit on pan him or lounge chair or him like the floor. He must lay on pan the floor and cock up him foot and have him pillow and have him look screen and watch him historical videos. And that's when me and Jack Pete say, yo, what man? What's your problem with me? Why we not vibe the way we used to vibe? And we aired it out. And from that moment, we made the commitment to each other to never let go. And over the last two years, <laughs> over the last two years, may I go be the first to say I became the biggest groupie, All right? Period, as the children would say. And wherever that Peter say, yo, Salah, you come? Yes, Japit, may I come? Me daddy. Your flight, but yeah, yes, Japit. And it was at Sunsplash this year when Peter was performing and he came to the side of the stage and he just started doing the two step and we was just rocking together. It's like, yeah, that's my guy. And he said, that's my girl. We had a brother sister love that was unbreakable despite the many years of separation. So I say that to us as a family, every single one of us here, find back that childhood love. Find back that. Because you know what? That's where the innocence, where daddy always used to talk about. That's where the innocence was. And we can achieve that as adults. If we want it bad enough, it has to be a two-way street. Like Peter, the lyrics. When me did start really love my brother when him sing Boss Up Barriers. When Peter did never afraid to talk true through the music. He used his platform like he was the Fred Hampton of reggae music. He wasn't afraid and sometimes he said, yo, Japis, be careful, you know. And no one hear them, them lyrics there, Salah. Man, if you talk to it. And he never, ever wavered from send us your love, Oja, your mercy and your grace. What we need is love to help us grow. Love is the only solution that can stop our resolution. He was never afraid to even show that vulnerable side like she's still loving me. And it's love. And I always say, I want love I and I deal with. I have faith in you. You have faith in me. Our love and care, our unity makes us all one family. Let's not mourn but celebrate the great Peter, and for all these years, me realize, say, yo, me I call the man God Peter, and me say, Jap eats. 
So when I say, long live, you say, Japit. Are you with me? Long live. Long live. Long live. I and I. Rastafar I. Oh, wow. There's only one question I'd like to ask the mom. Do you ever count the dumplings when you are frying them? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of picnics you have, you know, ma. Man, I tell you. Thank you so much, my dear sister, for that awesome tribute to your brother. And at this time, we're, we're going to be graced with the children, Peter, Peter. Morgan's children is going to grace us now with a poem. Come on, children. Thank you all for being here today. Heaven is a state of mind, a state of spirit. And once we are connected to the spirit, whom or what shall we fear? There is no such thing as the end of a life only more life to be lived. These are the teachings our father instilled in us. As children, it was too heavy of a proverb for us to hold near, but come to find out that same proverb was later a seed to be watered by our tears, weeding out our fears and sprouting from the dirt, our own tree of life, a new meaning of life. Yo, before my father ascended, all he asked for was to see is all, all his children. And I saw the joy in his eyes as, he, as we all told him we love him. I saw the pure joy in his eyes. All them times we got to sing and dance. This is true to your soul. All the flash and the cans, all the jewels and name brands, my father didn't care for none of that. That's a spiritual man. What mattered to him was a connection, a spiritual connection. Enjoying the moment, enjoying the life created by the Most High, Jah. Rastafari. Um, a lot of great people that came up here and talked about uh, the man that they knew as our father. And... They were right. He did have a lot of different personalities. I remember always looking forward to the weekends. Dad would be making up, making cornmeal porridge for us and sending us to public so we could go get the French bread. <laughs> Can't forget that French bread. He'd be smiling ear to ear as we all just sat together and enjoyed because that's all he wanted. He taught us to appreciate the little things, appreciate family. It's crazy to me how someone who solidified himself as a worldwide rocker could be the same person who would just love to sit on the couch watching superhero movies and stuff. <laughs> Even in the softest moments, we could all see the lion within him. He showed us how to live. It's beautiful how we all learn to love from a distance with him traveling the road, speaking his beautiful message to the world and us as his children going out into the world to forge our own paths. We would always find ourselves together again. It was tough at times, 
but love transcends all things. We cannot forget that. His love, Dad, your love, is and always will be unconditional. Being around my dad and having the chance to learn him beyond his artistry gave me the chance to truly understand and appreciate him more. I came to realize that my dad was not only an incredibly talented human, but he was charming, humble, full of life and so much love. He had a hilarious sense of humor and I see now where my siblings and I get that from. He was supportive and very proud of me and he made sure that I knew that. I'll miss you, Dad. Your jokes, your infectious laugh and bright smile, your velvet voice and super dramatic personality. I'm so honored to be your daughter. I will continue making you proud. I will keep my siblings close and I will be okay. You did good and your spirit will live on forever. Our father was a beautiful man, inside and out. He was a family man and a loving dad with a, with a big heart. Daddy, I want to thank you for always being supportive of each of us and all our goals, with no question. You encouraged us to do what we love, no matter how risky our choices seemed. And I will forever cherish the bond we shared. I'll forever be grateful for the years we spent together. And I'll always remember the memories you've made with all of, all of us. We'd like to take this time to invite our cousin, Anaya, and our bonus brother and sister, Talia and Jalen, to join us. Uncle Peter, being raised by you was a privilege. You were the best father figure to Anaya, Janiah, Jalen, and I. I'm reminded of how lucky I am to have been raised by such an incredible man. From FaceTiming every single day, grabbing dinner, having conversations from politics to pop culture. Dad wasn't always in town, but he always made sure to be present in our lives. I'm eternally grateful for the time I spent with him. As many of you know, <sighs> Uncle Peter has raised me since I was six years old. I would come to him for any and everything, keeping him on the phone for hours, talking his ear off. That's how I got my, my nickname, Abla. <laughs> that is one of the many things we have in common. We, bo we both love to talk. So I will carry on your legacy and talk everyone's ears off keeping them smiling and laughing just as you did me. I'm grateful for all of the music and beautiful memories I get to share with your grandsons, Elijah and Zaire. They will not only know your music, but the incredible father and man you were. Your legacy shall live on. Jabby praise. <laughs> Janaya, Anaya's twin sister, could not be with us today because she is proudly serving this country. But in true Janaya fashion, she left us a few words to share about her Uncle Peter. Hi everybody, I'm making this video because I wasn't able to be there today, but I wanted to say a few things, so just pretend if I was. I love Uncle Peter. He was the greatest uncle I could ever ask for. He made me smile. He made the best food 
hands down the house. I always had a father figure in my life, and Uncle Peter was one of those father figures in my life. I had someone that that I could talk to and that treated me like one of his own. I love and I care for every one of you, so I hope this service brings warmth and happiness into your hearts. Um, I love you guys, and thank you for hearing me. In closing, Peter Morgan was not just the velvet voice. He was a devout husband. He was an amazing brother. And he was a father to every single one of us. <laughs> wherever our roads may lead, wherever we go from this point forward, we will always be connected and share some of the best childhood memories with our dad, Peter Anthony Morgan, being the head of this beautifully blended family we are. We love you, we love you Dad. Then Roy Morgan Sr. said um, in an interview that each time his children became pregnant, he would say, congratulations. And each time somebody sneezed, he said, bless you. And I could just hear him saying, muscle tough, right about time, with great honor. Where is Miss Yuna? Where is Yuna? Sister Yuna Morgan. Come on here, my friend. Come here, my darling. What a legacy. It's really a legacy from Morgan Heritage. Rich legacy. Oh, she's here. Come on, sweetheart. All right. Good evening. Um, Tommy, I'm going to be strong. Salaji, I'm going to be strong. I just want to say thank all of you. Thank all of you. from the bottom of my heart. The journey from Morgan Heritage has been one that has been long, has it had its ups and downs, went through transformation, went through questions from the public, Wagwan, my brother Junior, the first drummer for Morgan Heritage gave him a a bit of the, the beginning of the group. There was eight of us. And actually, I wasn't the only girl. There was three girls in our Morgan heritage. My sister Janet was sitting right there, so I'm my sister Takilat that is here. My sister Janet had other dreams, other, other, her destiny was set in a different way. I give God thanks, and now she's one of the executives at uh, Emory Hospital in Atlanta. Give a big hand for Mrs. Sunday. <laughs> My sister Takilat is also now a, a big wig, working in the, 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 the work of social work. She's in the social work uh, uh, industries, excuse me for lack of a better term. But I thank them because um, starting out with Morgan Heritage was 
it was tumultuous. But Daddy, our father, the Honorable Ross Bishop Denmark Morgan, believed. And as the group transformed and we went through, you know, JP, which is my name for him, because back in the day, like my brother, them knew he was a dancer. He would give Chris Brown. But JP, as the lead and as the, the head of the arrow that the Lord anointed, will be missed. He gave each one of us laughter. He gave each one of us strength to believe in ourselves. He believed in love. I listened to all the friends that touched, that were touched by his presence, by his leadership, by his guidance, by his beautiful eyes. Thank you all. Sharon Burke, Kathy Goodall, Shane Brown, Taurus Riley, who is in the house with us. Thank you so much. Judith Bodley, to my mother, who has stood by us from day one. It wasn't easy. Our some tour she come and we, and we have cook. She and my brother Laza from LMS. Set up a cook rice and peas and thing in the dressing room for we. So the journey, Buju Bantan say, is not an easy road. Them city, glamour and the glitter. I think it's a bed of roses, and it has not been. My journey as the sister during this time of Morgan heritage has been one that I would take with me forever. My brother JP always said to me, Mommy, firm up yourself, man. <laughs> so, I firm up myself, and I'm going to be strong. <laughs> because Peter always tell me to be strong. I don't worry. But we. Jaja! He said, Mommy, Grandpa, Mojo, Luke's no worry. Because God did with we. And write a song when named Jaseed is planted in I and I. He's the root and the source of our lives. We are the branches, the trees that have life. We are the apple of his eyes, forever, for life. Thank you all again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for my brother Peter. Love, enough and respect going out to this family for perseverance and resilience to create a dynasty that we can all share in it. At this time, Luke's, Morgan, come forth, my brother. Hardest day in my life. Chappy. Everything, everybody. Chappy is a perfectionist. Um. When we born, it's a gift. And how we live life is our gift back to God. And I can tell you that my brother lived 1,000%. Doing what he wants, with him love, 
and want. And I'm very proud of him. Him never itch when him get him calling. We grow up as a family. And my father put enough pressure upon him. You are the leader. You are the vice. And it's a lot of pressure to be able to write the songs he write, sing the way I'm sing. And I'm just thankful that I was able to share it with the rest of our siblings where everybody become to know Morgan Heritage. It started off with my oldest brother on us here at Junior. Eight away. And then it come down to five away. And, you know, Peter Graham, Sam Mojo, you know, um, still carrying on, even though you and, you and I are still there. But this is the hardest, hardest, hardest thing to do. Daddy would always say to him, say to him, when he's a spear, and Peter is the point of the spear, who we are going to do now? <laughs> but Jappy, you don't great me, brother. Your work will live on. <laughs> Where it's like a part of it gone. And we had a dinosaur, it now come back. Now come back. Come. Yeah, my nieces and nephew. I vow for my brother to be the best uncle in the ever have here. Yeah? I am just a phone call away. And everybody here, this morning. when we were at God's school Daddy and Nima used to give away lunch money everybody make sure they get fit and lunch Peter see a theme for buy CD at the end of the week <laughs> every week Peter would buy a new CD that's all serious in taking craft we would be on stage for farming and Mojo and Grams would always tell him brother you can't make up your face up on stage He might go turn on and cuss and we are say, yo, Pete, you can't do that. And he must say, eat no right. <laughs> and be your best be, you know, for one of them night, they will call you out in front of toes and say, yo, fix up. You know, but that's Jappy. You know, him take it. He's a perfectionist. And he's done great. You know what I mean? In tech, the calling serious. Be the voice of the voices crying out. Be the voice for the voiceless. And him never, as Salah said, him never afraid to talk the truth. Dreadlocks are now live Rasta life. And him take. It's serious. When His Majesty, top soldier, me can say that. Carry His Majesty teaching on the world. But, I treating them so sure in a life. You have ban, you have to pay a tax. And your time ago come. We just don't know the day and the time. But we give thanks to everybody. Share the love with we brother. 
our leader, and we have to carry on. Yeah? We have to carry on. And that's what he wants. And again, I'm just thankful to share his life with him. A special human being. Special. And it's hard, it's hard, hard, hard. This one, yeah. It's like nothing we've ever felt before. Nothing we've ever dealt with before. You know? But we can't fly up in our God face. Because me angry. Why, Peter? Why? But we can't question it in doing work. I mean, I go be angry with God. Because I'm unsigned calling, and who is me if he says, it is just the love for our theme. We appreciate that emotion, because we love Peter. We love Peter. But we're not going to question it. He just questioned, say, why? Why? But we give thanks. We give thanks for the life that Japi has lived and he officiated his life and he wasn't selfish, a very selfless man to share him life with so much of us because he never have to. I could have said, why, Ja, that one day too, too rocky for me, you know. You know, I touched that one day. But he said, no, Ja, you call me, I'm to do your work. And him do it. I'm proud with my partners, Mojo, Gramps, Yuna. We did great. We win many awards. We win, you know. But one thing we sure, Jappy proud of, say him answer him calling of his majesty and him do your work. And you can't ask him on that. Thank you, Luke's Morgan. We have a saying in Jamaica that says that the, them say donkey said the ground no level. Things are never straight. We don't get to do, we don't get good things all the time. But there is a person who sees the good in all of us. And he says that there's a place in heaven for people like us who persevere. There's no one that sings this better or say it better to, to us more than Grams Morgan right now. Mr. Morgan. There's a place in heaven for people like him, really. Good evening, everyone. Well, go on. I try to keep this short. And I'm going to try in a ball either. First grade, they have an Afro big like this. We went to school that morning in 16 acres, Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh, Peter ended up be my little bridging. In the family, the family big. But in our family, everybody have them little best friend and them little pockets, you know. A 30 pick me, enough pick me. And I 
went to 16 acres up morning. The year before, I was in the first grade. First grade. Guess what? The second year, I was in the first grade. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I end up, me and Peter now end up in grade. And I had to take him to the first grade, to his class. I'll never forget that. Taking him to the first grade. But most of all, it was a Rasta man. He was a very spiritual man. Most of you guys know him as a great artist because he was incredible as an artist. I called him the GOAT. And I've sung with some of the greatest and tour with the best. And I said, Peter, you're not normal enough. This man would, an hour before we go on stage, drink the coldest drink. And I said, Peter, what you do? And come on the stage and go, ow! <laughs> and I said, same thing with Laza. When we were promoting Morgan Heritage Family and Friends album, Laza would be sleeping right before his part on the side of the stage. And when Laza come and start, do them never I go get V in? It's on YouTube. I'll leave that for another time. Love you. And the greatness of this man was only the love the most time, the love God. One morning, let me tell you, Peter get up on Bristol Street in Springfield, Massachusetts. Big up all of my friend them from Springfield. And when Peter get up, Peter, one man, he was scared. And everybody come from downstairs and he said, what happened to you? And my father come out of the room and my mother come out of the room, Emo. And I don't even know if them even remember. I don't know if Emo remember this. And he said, me see his majesty in a dream. For every Rastafarian, that is a dream come true. <laughs> so when Peter saw his majesty, he was in like a temper. He was like shaking. His eyes was red and his beard was white. Pretty. And I said, go and tell the world about me. That was Peter. The man. And from that day, we never stop search until we reach a Jamaica. May I try going to the short version? And Peter said, Daddy, we have to get baptized. I said, Baptized? And with their bloom, I was St. Thomas. St. Thomas, big up on herself. And my father said, What do you mean? Say, we have to get baptized. I'm just showing you where Peter meant to the family. I'm a father. He was always searching. We always had to grow spiritually. You upgrade your spirituality. You upgrade your clothes, your makeup, everything. But we don't upgrade with spirituality. Knowledge is vast and wide. Never stop reaching out. I implore you, all of you, clothe in yourself in the light of Christ. When Peter said, Daddy, we have to get baptized, we went and found the Ethiopian at Orthodox Tawahedo Church. And that's why we love his majesty. That's why when we say, Ja! I don't have time for telling you the whole thing, but Rastafari was known as Rastafari Makonen, born in 1892, July 23rd. Give thanks for the teachings of the 12 tribe of Israel. And from that day, Peter kept on feeding us, feeding us, feeding us spiritually. I said, Peter, which book that? I'll never forget when Buju Bantam come in New York. I said, Buju, we find a book. 
Would you say which book that? <laughs> if you don't know about you. And him say, one book named the Kebran Hagias. I saw it in the pre that do a song named Give it the Kebra, make we read it and gain the knowledge of the truth and feed who come to eat it. Peter fed the world through music, through him lyrics. I saw we end up with an album named More Teachings. And that album is like a book itself. But he kept growing. He wanted to show his diversity. And I said, but wait, we don't love women too. Yeah. And Barry Saman looked at me and said, what? Wow, I see. Mr. Linton come and say, I have a rhythm you now. And... and we we'll create a song say she's still loving me and I'll never forget the man in him come at my house because he did get in trouble if you know what I know this song right but and him said Graham so you have to do that and him just come with the guitar round at my house I play so me and mommy and Luke's and Mojo and I live together four away as big people you can't imagine and him just start playing guitar A boy up on the side, on the beach. And we writing songs. It was a thing in a St. Thomas that really grounded us. Because we came from Brooklyn. So when we went to Jamaica, people couldn't believe, say, why? America didn't bad because we chat part was so bad. And me have some cousin, by the way, where some of them never got Jamaica yet at the time. Where them chat, when them talk, you can't even understand them. <laughs> Auntie Gracie, my cousin them. Auntie Gracie, Auntie Lana, big up on herself. And my cousin them, Rankin. When you hear Rankin talk, know him bad. He's a bad rapper now and known as Opium Black. But our family roots is so deep, all the way from the roots of Clarendon. And I want to acknowledge my mother because she stand up with my father, you know. There's too many broken homes, people. My mother stood up with my father from my 16 in today's modern terms. So I don't want to call my father Gyalis. But he wasn't that. But when we see our woman stand up with a man through all the trials and pain. It's not normal. I always tell my friends, and I love pop culture. I wear designer too sometimes. But the message in the music needs to come back. Beyonce always have put out some songs. I'm, I can't wait to see her again. Maybe see her on the plane at the Special Olympics. But I want to see her because the songs is, is, is we push to break up relationships and break up families so much. I'm so happy that the man that I've become and grown, I'm not the man that, the man that I am today, I wasn't that man. It took time and maturity. Men, we take long to get it right. And I just remember listening to a song where Beyonce said, to the left, to the left. She said, I can have another you in a minute. Well, I know, matter of fact, he'll be here in a minute. My mother never do that. She grew up on songs like Stand By Your Man. <laughs> and that's not normal. So I implore woman, don't be so fast for breakup. My brother, seven children come up there. Flowers, a garden, all the colors are different. Isn't it beautiful? So I want to know that a nation is mourning, not only the Morgan family. Peter was dynamic. I remember when we were, I want to take this time to acknowledge the original members and Sharon Burke, thank you for making us get on that stage at, in Reggae Sunsplash in my.
and my father take all our money and say it was like a Joe Jackson story. <laughs> we annoyed our mother so much time me and Peter are singing at the back stairs on the third floor. And there were so many people that took chances on us. Eugene Gray, Thelonious Monk Jr., Bobby Digital, King Jammies. The names are too much to name. And it, it's like when you think of Peter, you think of a priest and a prophet. That sometimes a priest and a prophet is never honored in his own house. And I want you to know and understand that Peter was one of those persons that brought clarity to Rastafari. A lot of times in the 60s and 70s, Amanda said, Rasta, just Rasta. You know? But Peter was like, wait a minute, where's the data? What does it really mean? Let me declare to you the divinity of his imperial majesty, Emperor Ailes Selassie. The Rastafarian movement is not a religion. It is a liberation movement that make you think about uplifting yourself again, taking care of your body, taking care of your temple with a spiritual nucleus. <laughs> that spiritual nucleus, let me say again, that spiritual nucleus is based in Ethiopia by the Christian faith. So that's why we sang songs like, you don't have to dread to be Rasta. Them days where I eat enough patty and curry goat and all bully beef. <laughs> bully beef and white. Consciousness, when the Rasta part came to us, we realized that, man, there's some bad stuff in there. So I know better tank Rasta, tank Jamaica, tank the culture. So Peter was that guy that always dig, always a dig, spiritually, and he wanted the truth. You can't say Rasta, Rasta. That's why I may not smoke ganja till this day. Peter never smoked ganja. Don't even talk about alcohol. If you come close and I drink alcohol to him, say, what that? He was that guy. I wish we could all have a barbecue with him together so no could I really get to know him, you know? I... When I did the first one, I was afraid. I may say, who are going to sing the first verse? And he said, rise up, man. We are grams. We are doing it. We were hard on ourselves musically. I remember my brother Junior, Clifford Branch, was so hard upon you in a rehearsal. People, we used to rehearse 16 hours a day in a hot sun in a Brooklyn. The rear was there. Camille, Taliba, the Chippets, Salah, Miriam. Out of that come LMS. We were so hard. Junior, I'll never forget when Cliff was. Not only the vibration, but the musicianship. God bless the school, Edna Manley of music. Because a lot of those kids studied Mag and Eric. Um, saxophone player, you heard him play earlier on the piano. You saw music. And pastor, and him say he heard my father talking on an album named Live in Europe. Do it. Him say follow those people. 
they know what they're talking about. Me don't talk. Because we clothed ourselves in Christ by the ways of his imperial majesty, Emperor Isaac the I. That is the true teachings of his majesty. I remember the memories of the work that we put in. My brother David Morgan, him love his majesty so much. The man moved to Ethiopia never to come back. And guess what? Him now have dreadlocks. He was the original bass player of Morgan Heritage. Our brother Jeffrey Morgan come from Olaba, not knowing a lick of English, not knowing how to play any instrument, but he was one of my father's sons. And he learned how to play the lead guitar to we call him Jimi Hendrix. This is the history, people. And my brother Junior, Denry Morgan Junior, was the drummer. And trust me, I remember the stress and the headache and the lack of focus when we were sitting out on the front stairs waiting for our father to come. And daddy said, only now I can practice. Because we said, daddy gone to a meeting, a man and then I'm going to meet with the MCA. So see, we are outside, I wait for say, daddy, we get signed. When him come out and reach out, I carry him, so no go inside the practice. <laughs> this is who we are. This is who the Morgan family is. It was that kind of regiment. 1992 was a journey. The touring musicians, I can't remember them all, but Neville Moulton, Khan Mitchum Chin, Andre Bailey, we couldn't have toured the world without these musicians. The engineers, Shane Brown, thank you. Thank you for taking a chance with us, brother. Because it's been a journey to step out from my keyboard. And I remember when we went on tour together and I missed my brother. It was a lot of pressure. They pan toured in the area and John Legend and I watched them and I said, my God, how am I going to manage this thing? Only Peter can match this thing, you know. And Peter said, was holy man, you can do it. And then after that tour, I was on tour with Bujo and I thought I was doing well. Bujo was in, we was in Virginia and I come off at the stage. stiff man I verse same thing with you and I waiting for a verse Mojo waiting for his rap because he was the point of our hour. and let me tell you no no I got muffed at this you know One ninety-two coming up. We called him the animal. Correct, sir? And then we met Thelonious Monk. Important. Loving the children. These children make a lot of sacrifices too. And we go up on tour and the size that we make to build a career it's not easy wives, girlfriends and baby mamas take it easy upon these musician artists please 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 because it's not easy 
we go out there to sacrifice and establish our culture, our genre, and our country, Jamaica. I want a special notice to baby face that made us do our first dub play. Because just for me, you know, we never know what dub play we still him come be able to show up how we had a car in that street. I said, yo, no, I some dub play. I was like, what is a dub play? Be able to face until he took out $600. And said, so 300 a dub. I said, they're going The sound system culture. of Morgan heritage carry on the legacy of my brother Peter Morgan and the Morgan family we have a lot more coming we're gonna carry on he <laughs> all the way in China and he's doing an amazing job Morgan heritage don't even reach yet so the legacy continues and last but not least Tommy wherever you're there Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. That stood him the same way. She reminded me so much of my mother, you know. You know, easy to find a good woman. All of my artists friend them and the buckle down, you know. Got life short. Buckle down, find one that is worthy. So Tommy, be strong. And I know you have to stand up strong and do the right thing and carry on with better legacy. I want to close by reading A message. He got stuck in Ghana. This message is for my family. Mama used to say, when one member of the body hurt, the whole touched us all with his genuine love. From he was a little child, he blessed us with a gift of music. He took the role of leadership from a very early age, and he never let us down. We have been blessed with the presence of his pure soul. Let us Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, that's a family. Oh boy. That's a family. Strong family. Big family. No fop. Big up yourself. All right. Yellow man said, when is there's a beginning, there must be an end. If there's a rooster, there must be a hen. And without this, for this event to have been the celebration that it turned out to be to celebrate the life of Peter Morgan. We needed some baking powder, some baking soda, some eggs. If we bake need the main ingredient. So at this time, the heart behind tonight this evening with great honor and with humbleness please welcome Mr. Mojo Morgan
So we follow the divine spirit. Speaking of <sighs> such a selfless person. This man was a very serious man. Um, you can't say the things that you say. Me smoke ganja. Grams and Peter don't. And appreciate the love and support. He was probably the most selfless person I've ever known thus far in my life and probably will never meet one like that again. Um, there's not much more to be said. I really would like to just say thank you to people that have extended love and support for this gathering. King he is. People like the Manu family, Peter Daly, the commission. He brought the house down, right? Commissioner Hill was awesome. Um, Catherine, you did it. Christy, the official sixth member of Morgan Heritage. You know, VOG gonna be upset with you for that one. Um, Pastor Roth, thank you. You did very beautiful tonight. I know you're gonna lead us out in prayer before we head on out here and, and go enjoy the rest of the evening in remembrance. I want you all to remember this. We're not going to remember Peter in morning. Let us pay tribute to him. The glory that he is getting in the afterlife. He said, enough soldiers rise and enough soldiers fall. And when they fall, the name is written on the wall. So we remember the cause that they fall for. But in debt, there's no reward. Some will cry for a time. But life goes on and them half a dry their mind. But I and I will continue with the struggle in this life and give thanks every man in your open eyes. Because to rise and fall, but in this life, our brother Peter lived for the cause. And we've seen the world help us to make his name 
be remembered for I. So don't ever let them break your stride. Do your work and be real as your aunt. And uncles, we're here for you. Lord, tell me. I won't even go into the. We're grateful for the role you played in our brother's life, that you gave us all a chance to say. by these days to make sure that we stop with his body not being here anymore in this realm. St. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Him. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to Jah except through me. Give rest, O Jah, to your servant. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when we created man, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Last heart, receive him into your arms of your mercy, into your blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of love and light. Amen. Will you all please stand right now? And please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, time of deep sorrow. We are grateful for the precious moments and the lasting memories that we shared with Peter Anthony Morgan because he has touched our lives in countless ways. Ja, 
Wrap this family and all who mourn in your loving arms. Grant them the strength to face the coming days with and courage. May Landin help them to navigate the journey path forward as we bid fear our actions and memories. Inspire us to live with kindness, to love deeply and cherish each moment as a precious gift. In your loving name we pray. Amen. At this time, just touch someone beside you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make This concludes, I would like the, are they here? Huh? Wow. Just remain, oh, this is a good time. This is a Great moment. To see him very soon, right? And what a joyous moment that will be. He so said, the more we are together, the what? The more we are together, the more we are what? Yeah, man. Rest in love, Uncle Peter. We love you. One more time from the Morgan family again. The more we are together, the happier we shall be. Say the more we are together. Thank you. 
Why be any your love? Is my love with Because my love is your love We said the more we are Please, could you 